Welcome back, DG Joe here. Today we are going to be looking at the weekly metagame breakdown where we look at the top performing decks in the standard best of three traditional standard format up to mythic rank. If you're looking for best of one, we did a separate video that is posted yesterday. You can find it in the playlist. We also have started a new series for the week as well where we look at the top uh, tournament deck. So what's happening on the MTGO scene. For this video, we look at data from the ladder uh, from Untapped GG, which tracks user win rates, uh, tracks your collection, your own win rates, gives us aggregate stuff. Uh, link for Untapped is in the video description. But this new video, we're focusing on the tournament scene, whether it be MTGO leagues, challenges, uh, like there's pro tours, big tournaments in Japan. That focus is going to be on more of the tournament scene. There's usually some variance because the ladder usually rewards like linear decks, control decks. There's kind of a shift in metas. So it's giving you kind of a look at both scenes. Upcoming RCQ seasons in 2025, there's a few of them that are going to be standard. So competitive paper is going to be up at more of a forefront. So we want to get coverage in terms of all the options, what's happening, uh, stuff of that nature. Um, so we're going to try to put out more standard content to um, make your life easier. Know everything that there is to know about what the best decks are, how to approach the meta, trends, things like that. Uh, so we're going to start looking at the popularity of the decks, kind of the metagame distribution. And then we'll look at the individual decks win rates uh, for the last week up to like mythic rank. Um, so this video will start with that. Uh, really quick, we're less than 200 subs away from 15,000 on the channel. Crazy. Uh, appreciate everyone who's subbed. If you haven't subbed, it's free, easy, helps out the channel. As always, likes and comments for those who have subbed go a long way. It's very much appreciated. And I just want to do a special thanks for YouTube members. Uh, we've had some folks who have been consistently subscribing. It's a dollar just helps out support the channel, keeps the lights on on the back end here. Greatly appreciate all that support going above and beyond with the element. Don't expect people to do it. It's there if you do want to. I do appreciate it very much. I just want to shout out those people there. Um, so let's jump into it. The metagame is actually looking really stable in terms of just distribution of decks. We have nothing higher than like 10%, which is crazy. The mirror mid range is at 10, but we have like Domain at 8, Golgari at 8, Gruul at 7, Mono Black at 7, Azorius Oculus Tempo 6.5, uh, Mono White Control 5. Like This is a really good spread in terms of decks. It really feels like there's a lot of different elements that are viable uh, in terms of playing out kind of the approach to the metagame. Whereas we've seen like in Best of One, for example, earlier on, like the Leyline deck was representing 40%. Um, we've had decks like in Historic where like the Energy deck at one point was like 60 70 percent of the meta this is really kind of stabilizing in terms of having a pretty flat meta just look at looking at the congregation like we had gruel aggro kind of peak at 20 uh similarly golgari at 20 but even 20 percent isn't like huge huge meta share for a tier one deck just getting a big kind of concentration of decks in middle range is really encouraging just gives you a lot of options to kind of see like what works best um so if we just look really quick whoop, Go up there so we're gonna look at 36,000 games played over the last week uh this is diamond to mythic rank highest win rate deck is azorius auras and remember if always folks i will paste these deck lists timestamp them so you can copy paste to your heart's content this deck here 75 percent you are basically with this deck built around the horn oculus and hadi jin the core kind of concept of the deck draw discard loot kind of fill your graveyard and then you have Helping Hand and Recommission to bring back your Oculus or Hadi Jin. Self-milling enables the, the effects of these cards anyways because it makes your Jin bigger. It gives you fodder for Oculus if you have to hard cast it. Otherwise, this is what's called the Tempo deck. Uh, in some games, you're going to be the aggressive deck. Some day games, you're going to be controlling deck. You're going to kind of walk that line and play whichever role makes the most sense. These decks are usually a little bit harder to play because it's the role kind of varies each game. Generally, when you're, say, like Mono Red, you're going to be the more aggressive deck. If you're playing domain, you're generally going to be the more controlling deck. This one kind of walks that line a little bit more. Um, so counters, stuff like that. Doorkeeper Thrall on the sideboard. This will shut off ETB style effects from your opponent's creatures. Exercise, flexible removal, gets rid of artifacts, enchantments, creatures, uh, power four greater. So kind of that destroy evil effect, but can also hit artifacts to hit forge, which is really strong. Negate for cheap counters. Soul Partition has some more removal, Consoli's Flanker, Graveyard Hate, and then Temporary Lockdown. Majority of your threats that you care about are on the, the 3 CMC or higher, so your Lockdown comes in and deals with all those aggressive decks. Moving on, we go to Demir Midrange. Uh, so this one's at 70%. 
So notably, there's a lot of different configurations you'll see uh, with these kinds of decks. This one's a little bit higher in terms of curve, like we're seeing the Preacher of the Schism, which is an Oiza card. You'll sometimes see the one blue flyer that makes a map token in here. Uh, you'll sometimes see Gix in here with like the cheap evasive creatures. So this one here is going a little bit more interactive. Uh, just a lot of good 3 CMC mid-range threats. Preacher in here can draw cards, kind of hold down the fort against aggressive decks. Similar with Slasher, just, you know, bodies that you got to answer. They can't really attack your opponent or you're getting really good value. Uh, we see a lot of it. Annoyance, go for the throats, cut downs all mixed into your duress for hand hate. You have the phantom interference, fairy mastermind, draw some cards. Tashana's tide binder uh, screws up the kind of abilities of your opponents. Enduring curiosity is card advantage. And then you have her to tie in here. There's a version with like the cheap flyer, stuff like that with uh, Kaido that we featured in past weeks. This of the Demir decks was doing the best this week, at least in terms of what we're seeing. Doesn't mean the Kaido version's outdated. To me, I think Kaido's really sweet. Uh, it lets you kind of attack in a different angle because it doesn't get hit by Sunfall, where all these other threats do get hit by Sunfall. So it's kind of that balance game of like, where do you want to kind of ad adapt to? I think this version's probably a little bit more sound against the aggressive decks, but against the control decks, I think I would prefer to have uh, the Kaidos in there, at least from my perspective. Cut down is more removal, the rest for hand hate, goes vacuum for graveyard hate, bunch of cheap counters, Mortishana is really good against domain, anything with a lot of ETBs. Uh, Shieldred, Aquazots, just kind of for the grindy mid-range matchups, Gix Command, the Sweeper, along with Harvester of Misery, just another way to have a sweeper effect in there. Plays pretty nice with, you know, early could be a removal, or, you know, just kind of cast it, sweep up everything from your opponent's side, F5 mana. Apologies, folks. I'm still trying to catch my breath from COVID. So we're at 69% on this one here. Uh, this is, they're calling Mono Black Skeletons. It is the uh, Bloodletter combo with Unstoppable Slasher. How this deck works, very simple. Bloodletter's out, doubles the amount of damage the opponent would take. With Slasher, deals half their life. This way here, it would do all the life loss out of your opponent. Uh, with here, you're just kind of having a bunch of removal, cut downs, go for the throats, Ghost Vacuum Main, Ruthless Negotiation is Hand Hate, Hand Hate with the Bats, Hand Hate with the Liana, Withering Torment, Removal, that could also hit Enchantment stuff. You have the combo here with Unholy Accent. Um, this here uh, basically can give you card advantage, Drain, and... You get a demon on the backside, all kind of good value. With the blood letter out, it also does double drain, uh, which is nice. Overlord can help you mill into your combo pieces. Is a threat that kind of goes on layaway early. Virtue is some more removal. Mirix, I think this is Croaky's list, um, but it's doing pretty well. And hey, various removal options, sweepers, more withering torments, just flexible enchantment hate. Ley lines, just more graveyard hate. Shieldred, Aklazot's kick, like we've all mentioned. You can play Harvester of Misery if you're interested as well. Uh, another kind of threat there that you can get back. Go to Boros Auras. So this deck here is kind of like a Boros Mice deck, but leveraging Auras for Valiant Trigger. So you have your Mouse Package, Manifold Mouse, Ember Heart Challenger, Heartfire Hero. Uh, then you have things like Sheltered by Ghost as removal, and then Lifelink Ward. Plays really nice if you can get like a Double Striker with Lifelink, helps you in races. Guard Made Rescue protects against individual targeted removal. You have your Monstrous Rage, Theoreal Armor, Optimistic Scavenger, while not a mouse, kind of rewards you for playing all these effects. Um, and this one here will put counters throughout. Urbrass Forge uh, is just kind of a concession to more of the targeted removal. It doesn't get hit by temporary lockdown, gives you some advantage against the more grindy matchups. The Thematic Barrage. Uh, would come in, blue-white stuff, uncounterable, which is nice, Tectonic Hazard for the go-wide decks. Honestly, there's not like huge amounts of Convoke going around, so the Hazard might be a little adequated. There's Pyroclasm, which isn't terrible. Like It's going to hit your Manifold most, but you can kind of scale them out. These get around with Prowess often. If you're really concerned with something like that, you could kind of shift your approach in that regard. I get the Soul Cauldron for Graveyard Hate, Metal Guard for Artifact Enchantment Hate, Rest in Peace for Graveyard Hate. Stone Brain, you can get rid of combo pieces, big things you're worried about, Sunfall, stuff like that, and another Urbass Forge for the grindier matchups. 
Rakdos Lizards, 68%. So this one here, we got a Lizards deck. We've got some interesting cards being tried out here. The Norin. So Norin lets you attack with your uh, various creatures, and if they get blocked like in an unfavorable trade, you can return them back to hand. So you could get like the trigger from Hired Claw, get it back to hand. Let's you potentially re offspring like the iridescent vine slasher. Re kind of get your mana from this. You get the kind of ping triggers off this again, which is all kind of interesting in that respect. Premium Nemesis is another card being tried out. Uh, it gets around temporary lockdown, haste threat that can shut off opponent's life gain potentially. Good against like creature mirrors, bad against like white or black decks, just given that most of their removal is not going to deal damage anyways that would trigger it in that respect. Otherwise, it's a pretty stock lizards list. Hand Hate goes back even here for Graveyard Hate, Anoint for Removal, Lily, and Thought Stalker just for the grindier matchups. You have like Hand Hate kind of mixed into there for Brass Forge again for the heavy kind of sweeper based decks. Then go to Bant Control. This is a deck that's been picking up some popularity. Overlord Control. So this deck here, it's kind of a domain deck without Atraxa. You're using all your Overlords in here Overlord of the Mistmoors, Overlord of the Haunt Woods. Um, and then Overlord of the Flood Pits. So these all here would be kind of cheap cards that give you immediate value. This helps you ramp, card selection. This gives you the tokens triggering off of the Beanstalk. With this here, you have a lot more cheap interaction. Get, uh, no More Lies is cheap counter. Get Lost. Hellgun here can help you uh, gain life, put counters, kind of add mana, ramp you that way. We have Lockdown main. Rollback main, Sunfalls, Ley Lines. So all kind of effects like that with the domain, but you're just not going to the top end of Atraxa. You don't have to worry about herd migrations. It's a little bit more interactive early and then leveraging the overlords. Let's you go cavern on like any of the overlord types to kind of get them uncounterable. Cleaner mana with more duels that can kind of accommodate as opposed to playing just like a random red line kind of in there. You establish domain through your overlord of the hot woods. Else with smite as removal. Uh, negates as cheap counters, pop patch formation, flexible removal kind of options here. Rest in peace for graveyard hate, more lockdowns and sweeper. Frillback's really flexible, graveyard hate, enchantment artifact hate. Phaza for the grindier kind of, or the more aggressive decks kind of helps you break parity, gives you some life, gives you some blockers, kind of settles the board. Season of Gathering. Uh, this one can. Can blow up artifacts and enchantments so let's choose artifact or enchantment destroy all permanents of the chosen type really good against like the mono white decks stuff like that i could draw you cards similarness is really good against domain decks stuff of that nature you have attracts in here for certain decks just can't beat an attraxa so you kind of slide it in there mono red stuff like that you could also play jace in here jace is usually a card that's featured in a lot of these domain decks as a mirror breaker i uh, just kind of milling out your opponents since they're drawing a lot of cards off of the beat stock is it Hellraiser? So this deck here uh, is kind of a pseudo combo. You're drawing and discarding cards. Make your Capricious Hellraiser cost less. So this costs three less if you have nine or more cards in your graveyard. You then cast this, ideally trying to exile Season of Weaving, which creates more copies of this that just kind of lets you chain together multiple Hellraiser potentially. Uh, if you have like Chandra out, it doubles the spell, lets you draw a bunch of cards. You give all those things haste with Bitter Reunion as well. Uh, otherwise, the deck's just got a lot of ways to draw Discard, Bitter Reunion, Brass's Tunnel, Artisan's Talent. Uh, you have the rooms here that give you kind of removal, card draw kind of mixed in, Fires of Victories, kind of similar effects, just a lot of cheap removal. And sideboard is just like various graveyard hates, Betrayer's Bargain as five damage removal for like Shieldred. The gates, pyroclasms, brotherhoods, and just cheap kind of removal. Tashana for activated abilities. Ral for kind of the grindier matchups if they have ways to kind of get rid of Hellraiser, for example, Stonebrain. Uh, and then Virtue doubles up ET style effect. Uh, Mono White Control. So this is our Caretaker's Talent deck. Uh, so this here, there are, a lot of them are adopting. This one's at 66%. Enduring Innocence. Uh, so this here, along with the Caretaker's Talent, lets you draw a ton of cards. Um, a lot of these lists online are picking up Parting Gust, uh, just a way to blink if it's your own creature or exile if it's your opponent's, just gives you some flexibility there. Um, so if it is, uh, return that creature to the battlefield under owner's control with a 1-1 counter on it at the beginning of the next end step. Uh, if the, yeah, so exile target, non-token creature. If the gift wasn't promised, return that creature. So you could give them a fish. Um, kind of get rid of their bigger thing and it kind of works out nice there 
uh, lay down arms, just a bunch of cheap removal, get lost, exercise main, carrot cakes, or just drawing a bunch of cards using like the token engine to kind of overrun your opponent. Fountain ports, you'll see meticulous archive in this here. Archive just helps you with the uh, casting a Jace. You also have fountain port that can make you treasures. The Malera Beza could coincidentally make you treasures as well to cast this. Sarah Paragon for the grindier matchups. If they're blowing up a lot of your enchantments, you could rebuy them. Lockdown for early aggressive decks. Rest in peace for graveyard decks. Exercise, again, just more artifact enchantment hate. So, got an interesting version. So, this is basically mono red, very light slash of green. Uh, so, this isn't necessarily a full prowess deck, like with all the pump effects. This is kind of a mouse aggro list, 65% here. We still have kind of the components, Heartfire Hero, Emberheart Challenger, Manifold Mouse. We see Wildfire Wicker Folk being tried out here. Uh, the Gruel Lands allow you to cast this. Reasonable rate, especially if you have Delirium. Two mana, four, three, Trample Haste. Seems really, really good. Uh, Swift Spheres, your pump effects. You have some Shocks main along with Torch the Tower. Freeman Nemesis also in the list uh, as a way to potentially shut off life gain. And copies of Witch Soccer Frenzy. Since you're not you're like your creature heavier, uh, no slick shot show off in this list. Pick your poison is a reason to splash. Deals with enchantments, temporary lockdowns, deals with Atraxa, Sharpshooter as a similar case, artifact enchantment hate, forge uh, for the grindier matchups, pyroclasm for the very aggressive go wide decks, token decks. A lot of your stuff has prowess or cadets. Excuse me, Kill it. Apologize, I cannot shake these freaking side effects. Obliterating Bolt, Torch Tower, just cheap removal mixed in. Uh, Gruel Aggro number two, this is another kind of more prowessy version, 63%. Uh, so this version here has your Slick Shots, Innkeeper's Talent, qu couple Questing Druids, see the Might of the Meeks, Monstrous Rage, Snake Skin Veil, just a lot of ways to kind of protect your effects there uh, and to just kind of smash in very aggressively. So it's kind of similar concepts, a little bit different how they work out. Uh, very similar in terms of the cyborg configuration, scorching shot in here, paw patch formation along with pick your poison and the various removal covered. The other gruel deck, Boros Control. So Boros Caretaker. Uh, this is kind of the original version. So a lot of the elements that we see of the mono white version, uh, not using the uh, enduring creature instead of just having Forge Main, a Braid, Torch. Uh, so a little bit better targeted removal early, just having Torch the Tower in here. Not conditional like the Elspeth Smite on them attacking. Some virtues in here. We see the Overlord at the top end with one Meza, no Elspeth in this particular version. Sideboards, God Exercise, Rest in Peace. You'll see the Imidane oftentimes. Um, if you get to enough mana, it's kind of a combo in its own. You make the tokens, you haste things out against the slower decks. Can be a lot of damage very quick. Uh, Self-contained within one card. Lauren for Artifact Enchantment Hate. Temporary Lockdown again, aggressive decks. El Archangel Elspeth. When you need some life gain or just in the grindier matchups, Beza, similar effect, kind of breaks parity. Uh, then we have a more traditional domain. This is the Xur domain. This one's at 61%. Uh, so we see similar elements to the bank control. This one is playing attracts as main. You also have Xur in the main board. This one will allow you to animate any of your enchantments uh, so that you can animate your overlords even if they're impending and then get that attack trigger. Gives you lifelink and death touch and hexproof, which is nice. Uh, the mana base has Swamp to kind of accommodate here, uh, but very similar to the Bant one, just a little bit kind of tweaked game plan with the Xurs in here as well. Uh, very similar sideboard, negates, not on my watch, just cheap removal for especially the mono red style decks since it exiles. Rest in peace for Graveyard Hate, Temporary Lockdown, Tranquil Frillback, as well as Beza. Golgari midrange. So there's quite a few versions of Golgari going around. It's very configurable to kind of how you want to build it. This one's a little bit more, I'd say, aggressively slanted with the Archfiends in the main, Sentinels, if Bronco and Mosswood Dread Knight in this one, a whole bunch of cheap removal, uh, Frillbacks main, two Glissas, and we also have access to Unholy Annex, just kind of a Phyrexian Arena, plays nicely with Shieldred, Archfiend, gives you that card draw, gives you a demon. Uh, so the grindy matchups, just drawing two cards a turn is very effective. A bunch of utility lines kind of mixed into there. Hand hate, graveyard hate, cheap removal, hand hate. Harrison, there's a really flexible card right now. Kind of never dead. There's a lot of enchantments going around, whether it's the overlords, ley lines, whatever it is. Also hits creatures. Miasma is a sweeper. Lily for the grindier matchups. Sweepers, and then this is really good against the white-based enchantment decks. 
we have Orzhov tokens. So see kind of the engines here, caretaker's talent. This one's uh, at 59%, builder's talent, collector's vault kind of helps you get ahead. Um, I still don't know what this card does. And at this point, I'm refusing to learn. It makes some tokens, I, su I suppose. But you know what? I'm drawing the line here. I'm not learning what this guy does. <laughs> uh, it kind of sets you up. Could exile a graveyard, make you some tokens. Exile target creature for each other player. Exile deck. So it's kind of some removal token and graveyard hate mixed in. Uh, Kai on the top end, really good in the kind of the interactive metas since they can't target it. So Planeswalkers, tokens, kind of value engine there. Uh, interesting, no cutdowns, kind of a split between removal here. I think the other versions are a little bit more sound. Uh, Duress for hand hate, surge for protection against red and black, exercise. Again, just graveyard hate combo in the token mirrors, kind of makes copies for yourself. Lauren, artifact enchantment hate, temporary lockdown, and Kai in here. Then go to Rakdos Leyline, so mono red Leyline, uh, 58%. So similar to best of one, Leyline out. Uh, Scamp in here, so Scamp, turn inside out, Fling, lethal on turn two. Uh, then you also have, uh, sorry, Hardfire Hero, turn inside out, Fling, can kill them. Uh, you have Scamp with two pump effects, can kill them. So lots of ways to kill them on turn two. Otherwise, just throw spells, pack, try to kill them as quick as possible. Uh, your graveyard hates kind of sweep cheap sweeper torch tower a little bit more creature focused i prefer i think just more forges so you do have the screaming nemesis you could shift up a bit cheap removal in here as well i just think with the, this deck here your opponent's already going to bring in lockdown cheap removal going more all in on two drops to me doesn't make sense you kind of want to differentiate your threats you're also at 19 lines so you have to be mindful i would probably like honestly just play uh like cut these play an extra line in the sideboard and then just up the number of forges i would say and then lastly we have azorius enchantments uh so this deck here kind of has the engine with entity tracker during innocence to draw you cards bunch of cheap auras that we've seen similar to the boros deck but this one here has like inquisitive glimmer that reduces the cost gremlin tamer is kind of a young pyromancer but for enchantments Ossification as removal, uh, Far Flight, Faith Flight as protection, along with Shade, uh, Shard Made Rescue. So you have eight kind of flash protection effects that would all trigger that. So kind of draw cards, make a big threat, and then beat them down that way there. Cheap removal, Graveyard Hate, big stuff removal, Enchantment Hate, uh, some cheap counters, and then Ossification as well. That's it for the week. Hope you enjoy. Let me know what you've been playing, and we'll catch you next time. Talk to you.